Good morning, guys. Greetings. Oh. <coughs> oh. Okay. Good morning. Let me try this again. Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Okay. So, first of all, hopefully everybody got a chance to watch the video I did yesterday. I know it was long. I said it was going to be long because we were going to cover a bunch of information in one video. And, um, of course, I didn't cover everything. You can't cover everything. It's impossible. It would take... A thousand years of videos to cover every little detail. A lot of stuff has to be figured out on your own. A lot of stuff has to be researched and discovered that's going to work for you in your situation. Because it's a little different for everybody. Everybody's skill level is a little different. So I give you guys information to get you started in the right direction if that's something you want to pursue. There is a right way and there is a wrong way. We want to avoid the wrong way because the wrong way is what gets us ca uh, caught up in the world. The wrong way is what gets us separated, and it's what gets us focused on us instead of focused on God. That's what we want to avoid. That's the main purpose of all of this is what to avoid. And hopefully you watch the whole video, especially to the end. We talk about some scripture and look at some different aspects of this mindset and how we should be looking at this. If we're putting our trust in God, it doesn't matter if we have a year's worth of supplies put back or no supplies put back. We put our trust in God. He will provide for us. He will help us provide for others. God's going to have control over all that. We've just got to stop worrying about what's coming. There's going to be suffering. The Bible literally tells us if you seek to live a godly life, you will suffer persecutions. There will be problems. And the big, the big newsflash for all of us is if they decide to come for us, they know who you are if you're a Christian. They know who you are. They're, you can't hide. Even if you don't post anything anywhere, you can't hide. They're going to come for us. And if they come for us, none of that stuff is going to do anybody any good anyway. Especially if you're not teaching them how to use it or even you know, what to do. We've got to let all that go and focus on God. To be prudent, do things the proper way from a godly standpoint. And that takes care of everything. Because the, the best planning, the best preparing, the best prepping is what you're doing with your heart and whether your heart is ready or not. Because when fear sets in, when you see the destruction coming and fear sets in, there is no amount of preparing that can, that can circumvent that fear unless you have put your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that can help you. Now with that out of the way, and like I said in that video, I'll say it again. If you have other questions, please email me. I am happy to answer the questions. Um, and I'll give you details and links and stuff like that to help you out. And, and, and advice on anything specific you may have a question on. But what we have to remember, and what we always have to remember, and that's going to be addressed today in our video, is we will not be here for the tribulation. If we are preparing to survive the tribulation number one we're not putting our faith in god because we're not trusting his word his word says that we as believers will not be here for the tribulation period done end of discussion there is no argument here i know a lot of people want to argue about it there is no argument here because there is no scripture that says we will have to go through the tribulation <coughs> to make it to the end there's no scripture that hints we will have to go through the tribulation to make it to the end there is no scripture at all that says we must die for our faith no scripture now somebody will may say well but everybody that was godly in the bible died for their faith no they did not not everybody did not everybody was put to death for their faith go and do a study on that you can find out how they died some died old and just died some had accidents. Some were put to death. Not everybody. Not everybody is chosen for that. Some people are, some people aren't. So we've got to remember that the tribulation is a specific series of years meant for the sole purpose of focusing on turning Israel back to God. For God to do a final, a final cleansing and turn their face back to him and to deal with the unbeliever to punish the unbeliever that seven years is a time of wrath 
God's wrath, Jesus Christ's wrath, Satan's wrath, it's all combined to pour it out on this earth in a final cleansing and a, and a, and a releasing of the wrath that God has been storing up all this time. It's not the final judgment because there is a white throne judgment a thousand years later that, that's the final judgment. That's a whole different story. <clears throat> it is very important for us to remember that that, per, that time frame is meant for a, a very specific purpose and it is not has nothing to do with Christians. Listen, the age of grace ends. See, when you go into the when you, you go into the tri tribulation, if you go into the tribulation and you're not saved, it's not going to be a matter of just saying, Lord, I believe. It's not going to be a, a looking up and, and, and being in repentance. Of course, repentance is going to be an issue. But it's not going to be as simple as what we have now in the age of grace. God expects something a little different. And you read the Bible, you got to read the scriptures on this. When you read the Bible, you start to get a sense that it's going to be a little different. The age of grace is over at the rapture. Something different is, is going to happen during the tribulation. That's why he has a very special group of 144,000 evangelists that are going to go around the earth preaching the truth. That's why he has two witnesses coming with very special abilities preaching the truth. That's why he has angels flying around preaching the truth. Very, very, very specific as to what's going on. The age of grace, it hasn't been that way. It hasn't been anything specific. It's the age of grace. He's opened it up. But when that door shuts, something change, something is going to change. That time frame is meant to deal with a specific group of people, unbelievers. Because at that time, Israel is an unbeliever too. But in order to fulfill prophecy, he is going to deal with them in a very specific way. And that is has nothing to do with the church. It has nothing to do with us. The church has done their job at that point. They've done what they were called to do. They were removed. You're out of here, guys. Now we're going to do this uh, the other way. Because prophecy has to be fulfilled. We play no part in it. So it has nothing to do with us. Are we going to see aspects of that manifest uh, before we are removed? Absolutely. You can't help it. It's not going to... you got to understand, too... <coughs> If chapter 6 of the book of Revelation says when he starts to open those seals to start the tribulation, when he starts to open those seals and all those things start to happen, well, it's not going to be like we're going to go up, everything's going to be perfect all the way up until this this day, and then the church is removed, and instantly crops are going to disappear, animals are going to lose their minds, people are going to immediately be transported wherever there are in the world to be at war, and people are going to instantly, suddenly, have, it's not going to happen instantaneously. There is a lead up to all these things. So you, you're going to have bleed over from that before the time frame hits, leading everything up and preparing everything and getting it to that point. And then it will be worldwide when those seals start to break. It will break out over the whole earth. God doesn't do stuff like, and all of a sudden there it is. Except for one event, <laughs> that will be the rapture. But even then there's a lead up to the rapture. Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up. You know it's about to happen. So, there's you're going to see aspects of those things. And that's what people are taking as the seals. But they keep forgetting that the seals are worldwide events. And what's not worldwide right now. Oh, but the, the pandemic is worldwide. No, it's not. Sweden has no COVID. And they have no mask mandates either. And they have no vaccine. Sweden's doing just fine. They have one death a day. Several other countries. Nothing. It's eradicated. See, the news is lying to you. I talk to people from those countries online. I look at news sources from those countries online. News sources that are suppressed, by the way. They say there's nothing. It's not worldwide. None of this is worldwide. When it becomes worldwide, then you know you're in the tribulation. Because nobody will be able to get away from it. Nobody will be able to do anything. That's what the Bible describes. It will affect every single human soul. We're not there yet. And we're not going to be there. If you are a born again believer, you will not see the tribulation. You will not see the Antichrist. Period. It's not for us. 
That's for a different group of people. I've gone over this in detail before, so I'm not going to get into super great detail here. <clears throat> but we have warnings and we have speeches from the Old Testament that talk about this, that give us an indicator of what's what's coming, of what's happening. Joel is another example. You guys remember I read through Amos. Amos talks about that. When you listen to Joel, it's amazing. You listen to the first chapter of Joel and what it describes, it's like, wait a minute, what is he talking about here? Is he talking to us? And you find out he is. Or some of us anyway. So let's read Joel 1. And then I'll show you something really cool at the end. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has anything like this happened in your days? Listen closely, guys. Or even in the days of your fathers? But you listen very closely. He's not talking. He's talking to them about what's happened to them. But listen, because it sounds like he's talking to us too. Tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. Funny enough, that's how locust cycles go. There's four, four cycles. Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the new wine. Because of the new wine. What's the new wine? What is, what is the new wine in the New Testament? Yeah, exactly. For it has been cut off from your mouth. It's talking about the removal of the gospel. They're being silenced so they can't speak the gospel. For a nation has come up against my land, strong and without number. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the fangs of a fierce lion. That's a hint. That's a hint. Who is that? Not. It's not Britain. <laughs> Who is that? That reference is elsewhere in the Bible, referring to a specific nation. And it says that they're going to be the ones to attack him, too. He has laid waste my vine. What's the vine? And ruined my fig tree. What's the fig tree? He has stripped it bare and thrown it away. Its branches are made white. What is this talking about, you guys? If you know any scripture at all, you know this is talking about a very specific event surrounding a specific nation. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering have been cut off from the house of the Lord. Um, that verse 8 is referring to God and Israel, by the way. The grain offering and the drink offering have been cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn who minister to the Lord. The field is wasted. The land mourns for the grain is ruined. The new wine is dried up. The oil fails. Be ashamed, you farmers. Wail, you vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. Is anybody catching what he's talking about here? It's pretty obvious to me. He's talking about faith drying up. The end of faith apostasy the vine has dried up and the fig tree has withered the pomegranate tree the palm tree also and the apple tree all the trees of the field are withered surely joy has withered away from the sons of men gird yourselves and lament you priests wail you who minister before the altar come lie all night in sackcloth you who minister to my god for the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. The grain offering and the drink offering are prayer. How many people really pray today? I'm the only one, I think, on any platform that does a dedicated prayer. I don't think anybody else does. I hope but more people do. Consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. What's the day of the Lord? It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Is not the food cut off before your eyes, joy and gladness from the house of our God? I need to highlight this one. The seed shrivels under the clods, storehouses are in shambles, barns are broken down, for the grain has withered. How the animals groan, 
The herds of cattle are restless because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep suffer punishment. O Lord, to you I cry out, for fire has devoured the open pasture, and a flame has burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field also cry out to you, for the water brooks are dried up, and fire has devoured the open pastures. I want you to stop and think about something for a minute, because when uh, I, went th I went through the seals in chapter 6 of the book of Revelation recently, and it speaks about a lot of these things. This is talking about famine. This is talking, uh, how many countries, how many states are on fire right now? <laughs> it's everywhere. How many of them are flooded and underwater right now? It's everywhere. All this is, is happening right now. What is this talking about? The opening to the tribulation. It said that there's, he's talking to us, telling us, get in here. Get in here and start. Get here and start talking to people right here. Pray, cry out, wail. Because faith is gone. Once the church is raptured, there will be no more faith on this earth. There will be no more faith on this earth. That will be that the church is the last bastion of faith. He's talking about the day when nothing but nothing will honor God. Well, there will be nothing and no one to honor God when everything will be dark. When I read this, to me, this is talking about the tribulation and what's going to happen. Just a, a sampling of what's going to happen. How do I know? Well, go to chapter 2, the day of the Lord. <laughs> it literally is referring to it. Joel 2 talks about an army. There's several chapters in Joel. God judges the nation. Uh, authority of the prophets. That's Amos. God judges the nations. Joel is a great book to read for more insights into the tribulation and into the end. Folks, we're not there yet. We have aspects of these things happening around the world. We are not there yet. We as believers will not see this. I know there's a lot of people out there. I am but one voice trying to counter this. There are a lot of people out there telling you the tribulation is here and it was post-trib on the rapture. They're wrong because they're not reading the Bible. They are looking at other people. I show you every day. I show you the scriptures every day on this screen. I show you, and then I verbally read to you the scriptures. We're commanded to do this. And I show you that we're not there. I remind you and, and give you, bring, call into remembrance the word of God that says what's supposed to happen. To remind you and to strengthen you and to keep you on track. To keep you focused on him. I understand how easy it is. It's very easy. But because of what I've seen and because of what he's shown me, I can't fall into that trap. Because I know better. I know different. But I'm desperately trying to help you guys not get caught in that trap too. Because I know it's easy to get... It's easy to hear that and get drawn into it. You've got to figure out where you're going to put your allegiance. Is it God and his word or is it man and his word? Because man will tell you what you want to hear or what they want you to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to go and read God's word because God is going to tell you what you need to hear too. I want you to take everything you hear from any person. I don't care who it is. And I want you to go to the Bible and prove what they say in context. Five verses above, five verses below. Make sure that what I give you and what anyone else gives you is truth from God's word. God's truth. Because I can mislead you just as well as anybody else can. I'm human too. But my desire isn't to mislead anybody. I don't know what theirs is. But I know if there's somebody out there that is telling you, we're in the tribulation, the rapture is, we were wrong about the rapture, it's post-trib. Number one, they're not reading the Bible. Number two, they're listening to other people and taking their truth and trying to apply it. And number three, they're deceived. And they're trying to share that deception with you. Don't let them do that. Don't let them do that. We know the truth. We know 
this is this is our time now but when we're gone that's it it won't be our time anymore there's no purpose for the church to be in the tribulation and people keep talking about oh there's no examples oh there, there's nothing that says that that's what's going to happen okay well i guess that's why the rapture is described as a very special singularity a mystery that no one knew about but wanted to know more about something unique that only one apostle was given. Something very, very, very standalone. It stands all by itself. It has no events surrounding it. It has no prophecy technically surrounding it. But but it does. You can you can find some in there that seems to hint at it. It has has nothing that that connects to it specifically. It is a one-of-a-kind standalone event for a single purpose, for a single group of people. That's why they can't find very much. And the people who are in God's kingdom know, because they see his word and they know the truth. What I don't want, because I've seen this look on people's face before, is I don't want people to have to come to that realization after the fact. Because that is a horrible, horrible weight. I mean, I've had that feeling before. It feels like, it's when you lose all hope. It feels like your heart just drops out of your chest. So I have to fight this fight. And some of you guys may get tired of hearing me talk about this. I have to fight this fight. I have to make sure that people understand that what the world is telling them is a lie. Christ is coming. The rapture is real. <laughs> the day of the Lord is real too. And I'm speaking this to anyone that's listening and everyone that's listening. You don't want to be on the wrong side of this. People think they're going to survive the tribulation. Well, they are sadly mistaken. Because I've gotten to see aspects of it real time in the real world in different countries the people could hardly survive that if it's worldwide and a hundred times worse no one will survive it it'll only be because god keeps them alive that they will make it and just the little bit of studying that i've done just a tiny bit of studying that i've done tells me that no one should survive even the seals but God in his mercy will keep people alive so that they have an opportunity to change. In his infinite mercy, in his infinite love and grace, he is going to do a, a, a just amazing miracle in that he's going to keep people alive so that they have an opportunity to see the truth and to change. There are very few people in the world today that don't have some awareness of what the Bible says about the tribulation. It, it, you're, you would be hard-pressed to find anybody that has no idea that of what's going. People are talking about it everywhere. Every government is talking about it. Everybody knows. Everybody's aware of it. Why that wasn't a, that's not enough to change them, I don't know. But everybody's aware of it. They know. You don't think Russia, you don't think uh, Putin knows what the Bible says about Gog and Magog and knows that, that that's talking about his region? You don't think he knows that? Absolutely he knows that. You don't think the leaders in Israel know that too? Sure they know that. But see, people brush that off because their pride is so strong. They don't pay attention to it. If God was to open Vladimir Putin's eyes so that he could see what was really going on, if he was to take his pride and scooch it to the side a little bit and give a little window for him to look at it and realize that it was talking about him and those he's in league with, he would repent. But he doesn't desire that. So God is turning him over to his desires, just like he said he will to anybody in the Bible. He's turning him over to what he wants, giving him his heart's desire. And by doing that, he's going to fulfill his prophecies. The main goal of this, of all of this, 
is to make sure everybody knows what's going on. That they have a, a much more clear understanding and how it applies to us real time in the world today. And that we're not there yet. And we're not going to see it. We're not going to be there. Stop looking for the Antichrist. I know how to figure out who he is. The book of Numbers tells us. It's not a mystery. It never has been a mystery. But I have there's, ac there's information I don't have access to in order to figure this out. But it is possible. Because there's no reason to. We're never going to see him. Instead, look for Jesus Christ. He is the one we should be watching for. We know who he is. He is already established. We will definitely see him. Let us look for him and let us help others find him. Let us try to hold that door open just a little bit longer and shine that light out so people can see it and come and get in the sheepfold before the tribulation comes. I promise you, it's not going to be what you think it is. There are people out there that think they're going to survive. I'm going to survive it. I'm going to survive it. Because they think they're going to prove something to themselves and the world. No one cares. No one cares about your eight-stage water filtration system built uh, with your uh, sump pump, your ram pump built, designed from the inside of the pyramid. No one cares about your 50 acres out in the middle of nowhere with a beautiful creek running through it that you can fish in and your underground bunker that's contained within there that nobody can find the entrance to. No one cares. The only person that that's going to serve is you. But when all hell breaks loose on this earth, when the churches are removed and that vacuum, that void is filled with pure evil, unrestrained evil, it makes no difference because that evil knows where that stuff is and it will find you. And no one will be exempt. No one will be able to hide. No one. No one will be able to overcome it. And I tell you, like I've told so many other people before who have dug these underground bunkers, all it takes is someone to wrap a bunch of rags or towels or material or mud around your, your little air vent and you won't make it through the night. We think we got a handle on all this and we don't. We think that, that we're awesome because we know all these things. It doesn't do us any good. I know so many cool ways to make little fishing lures out of stuff you find in the wilderness and where to look for bits of bait and how to make fish hooks and by hand and all this kind of stuff. It doesn't do me any good if there ain't no water to fish in. All, all that stuff is useless if there's nothing for you to use it at. Instead, let us fill ourselves with the knowledge and understanding and faith in Jesus Christ and what God's word says about these things. Let us walk in that. Let that be our survival plan. Let let's, us make him be our survival plan. Lord, I'm not going to put my faith in my abilities. I'm not going to put my faith in my stuff. I'm not going to put my faith in, in what I think I can do. I'm going to put my faith in you right now. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, to sing your praises, and to lift your name up, to, to proclaim your works, the works of your hands, the miracles that you're doing today in people's hearts, in the world. We give thanks for your mighty word, your word that teaches us, convicts us, trains us, prepares us. The greatest survival manual ever made the bible father we see the tribulation approaching we see so many aspects of these prophecies that talk about this time frame manifested in the world today we see the people doing exactly what you said they would do we hear them saying exactly what you said they would hear we're watching it roll in like a thunderstorm like a fog bank coming in off the ocean we're watching it rolling in. by the way if you've never seen that Take a trip to the coast and watch that. It's really awesome. We're watching it roll in. We're watching everything move towards its final conclusion. Just like your Bible said. Well, Father, today, 
far too many of us are putting our faith in what we think is true. We're putting our faith in, in material things. We're putting our faith in what we think we know. Father, make us to put our faith in you instead and in your word. We just read Joel 1 this morning. Clearly, you're speaking to us. Clearly, you were talking to the children of Israel at that time, but clearly you're speaking across time to us, telling us to watch out, telling us to be wary, telling us to be ready. And by being ready, I mean being faith, faithful. You've warned us in many places, there's going to come a time when the word of God will not be proclaimed on the earth. Say it isn't so. Heaven forbid that that time would ever come, but you said it's coming. You said there will be a time when there will be no gospel being preached. And the only conclusion I can come to is, not only will your Bible be gone, but your people will be gone. Your church will be removed, because we're the only ones speaking it. What a dark day that's going to be. But Father, we know by your word that we're not going to be here to see that day. People, people today are, are, are preaching lies about your word. They're preaching their truth instead of your truth. Deceiving everyone. Making a mockery of the gift of Jesus Christ. The true and real and free salvation provided by his blood atonement on the cross. And they call themselves Christians. Father, how can this be? And as infuriating and unfortunate <clears throat> and as as what's the word I'm looking for as it's, it's, it's disappointing as disappointing as it is to, to see this and to hear this we can only proclaim the truth back in response in our desperate attempts to, to, to stop this to help others find hope, to help others come to you to find truth, the real truth, your truth, and get out of that trap, get out of that deception. But I fear today there just aren't enough of us. Just, we're just not loud enough, and we're not reaching enough people. And just like you said in Second Thessalonians through Paul, a great apostasy is going to happen, a great falling away is going to happen. And we see it. Father, I pray that you strengthen those who are in the faith. I pray, pray that you strengthen my brothers and my sisters in Christ. I pray you strengthen your people and your church to continue on, to keep moving forward. We can't change the world. Only you can change the world. We can't change people. Only you can change people. But while we're still here, Father, make us to be strong and bold, to continue to try to proclaim the truth to a lost and dying world. Make us to be your emissaries. Make us to be examples of love. As hard as it is sometimes, a lot of times, make us to be examples. These, 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 these lanterns that share out, that show this love and this light, and your wonderful truth. Maybe, maybe just one more can get saved. Thank you, Father, so much for allowing us, entrusting us with your gospel and your truth. Thank you for giving us platforms to be able to share this with the world. Thank you that there is a watchman still speaking in these last days. That there are people that are sharing the, uh, the elders and what they spoke 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, that we have access to some of the greats who have already passed on and are in your presence now. And to, and to this day, their words are still speaking and still changing people. I think you there are still faithful Christians in the world today that there are still people who can be called upon to stand up and preach the truth. I thank you that there is a watchman. And as loud as we're yelling, it just seems like the people aren't hearing. Father, please help us. According to your will, please help us reach more people if possible. According to your will, help us preach this gospel as long as possible. According to your will, help us to continue to share your truth around the world and your love. 
Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love and your free gift of salvation. Thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, coming and dying for us and paying our debt so that we may enter heaven by faith through him. Thank you that we may have an opportunity. And thank you for calling us into service for your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. I don't... I'm not even going to pretend to know how much longer we're going to be here. I don't. I'm not going to pretend to know what's going to happen between now and that point that we are removed. Because I don't. What I do know is what God's Word says. It's going to continue to get worse. We, as His children have got to fight as hard as we can, as long as we can. We've got to speak out as much as we can. While we have that time frame, while it is still day, because when the tribulation comes, it is going to be darkness. And there won't be anybody preaching except for the ones he sends. Let us not long for that day. Let us not long for the day of the Lord. Let us long for the day of Christ when he comes and removes his church. Let us watch for him instead. Let us take all the cares of this world and lay them to the side and turn to him and watch for him and pray for him. Come, Lord Jesus. We're watching for you and we're waiting for you. Whatever we lack, add that to us. Whatever we should be doing, show us and teach us. And whatever we should be praying, Holy Spirit, please speak on our behalf. Thank you, guys. For watching my videos and supporting me with your prayers. Thank you for commenting and asking questions and offering your insights. Thank you for all of the support you've given at this time frame. I truly think our time is short and we will be meeting in the clouds. And I hope to see more of us there than less. Much more. But it is going to be a glorious day. A glorious day. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I will see you in the next video.